step closer. I'm using this same technique, technology, discovery on a motor and fascinating. Okay, so the motor is being powered by that double pancake, which wraps in and out. Um, power supply, it also goes through one side of that transformer. Okay, the other side is open. This coil is not being used, it's just to experiment with uh, collection later. Okay, so the motor is speeding up and slowing down, speeding up and slowing down by itself. Now, on the input, we have a diode. This is the main power coming in. So I'm measuring the power coming in, and I'm measuring on the other side of the diode. Okay? That's what we're doing. So, in theory, they should be equal, right? So right now, they're about equal, and it's on slowdown, slowing. Now, wait till it gets to a slow RPM and watch what happens. So they're still about equal. Now negative. Oh, look at this. While it's speeding up, almost negative 8 volts. Okay, figure that out. Negative 8. Look at my multimeter leads. Red and a black. And those come around to the multimeter. Red and a black. Okay, what side has 8 volts on it? The one coming from the motor is sending out 8 volts. Therefore, the input doesn't need to be there per se at that point. But it doesn't have enough amps to self-power by itself. But I'm thinking maybe if I pull those amps, take those amps, and then put it back in. But anyway, watch again. Speed up. negative 7.8 and I'm only putting in 8 volts into the supply now it's on slow down it produces it produces so much back EMF produces so much back EMF in this configuration that it blocks the input so it starts slowing down because there's no input anymore then when it's down and the back EMF when it's slow enough and the back EMF starts going down then the power supply could take back over. That's it.